this is a picture of your retina now if you draw a circle centered on the central of point of your retina of a diameter of 5.5 mm then the area that will be covered under this circle is what we call as macula the importance of macula is that this is the area responsible for our sharpest vision so you can read and small letters see small things and identify color primarily because of your macula a break in the center of your macula is what is known as a macular hole 80% of macular holes are related to aging and usually occur in people over 60 years of age early on one may notice a slight distortion of blurriness in their vision due to macular holes but if left untreated patients may lose vision objects can start to look bent or wavy reading writing identifying colors may become very difficult so the best tool to diagnose a macular hole is a is an optical coherence tomography machine or what is known as oct scan so a oct scan uses specialized light to make a to take a scan or a cross sectional image of your macula so as you can see here the square area with that green grid is the area that is scanned by a oct machine this is is how a normal oct scan of a retina appears if a macular hole occurs then you can see a defect like this with a break in the retina through and through at the center of the macula so how do we treat macular holes there are three factors to consider in deciding how you are going to treat a macular hole first what is the cause of the hole has it happened due to age or is there some other reasons like injury or some other vascular conditions so nearly 83 83% of the macular holes have no prior cause they are due to age and that's why they are called idiopathic or primary macular holes the second important factor to consider is what is the size of the hole and the third whether the hole is having some traction that is whether vitreous is still attached to the hole or not so here is the oct scanning of a patient a oct scan of a patient showing a full thickness macular hole now this patient did not have any prior reason for the macular hole so this is a case of a idiopathic or primary macular hole so the first thing we have to see is what is the size of the hole so the size is measured by measuring the distance in the middle of the hole for example in this patient the hole is 307 microns wide the second thing that we look for in the oct scan is whether vitreous is still attached to the hole or not in this patient vitreous is still attached to one of the edges of the hole so for us we will diagnose it as a macular hole with persistent vitromacular traction vmt now depending on these factors that is the size of the hole and presence or absence of vitromacular traction we can decide on the treatment of a macular hole that how do we treat a macular hole so if the macular hole is less than 250 microns 
white then it is called a small macular hole these holes can close on their own and even injecting some special chemicals like ocriplasmin we can close such holes if we operate on such holes 100% of the times the holes get closed by just remo removing the vitreous that is just by doing vitrectomy if a hole is more than 250 microns wide but less than equal to 400 microns it's called a medium sized hole these holes are not likely to close on their own and injecting special chemicals alone are very less likely to work these holes close in more than 90% of cases with vitrectomy alone if however the hole is more than 400 microns in size it is a large hole only surgery works in these cases that to vitrectomy alone is not so successful with one fourth of the cases not closing with just vitrectomy and therefore we must do an additional step of peeling the internal limiting membrane to close such holes internal limiting membrane of course is the innermost layer of the retina so you can say it is like peeling of the skin of the retina then that step is important to increase success or uh, increase chances of success in closing a macular hole if the hole is large so let me show you few cases of how we manage macular holes based on the criteria that we have just discussed our first patient was a 45 year old female who presented with complaints of distorted vision in the right eye for one month her best corrected visual acuity was 6 by 12 so on examination we found that there was some vague reflex in the center of the fovea we did a oct scan and it showed that there was a full thickness macular hole which was less than 250 microns in size and there was no vitreous attachment to the macula so this was a case of primary small sized full thickness macular hole without vitro macular traction as we know small macular holes can close on their own but this patient was having lot of vision problem so we decided to treat we also know that if we did a vitrectomy 100% of the times we could close such holes but we also have told before that these kind of holes can be successfully closed even by injecting some special chemicals so that's what we did in this particular case we did not operate but just did an injection of intravitreal sf6 gas so you can see the gas bubble here and then you can see the images that in 15 days time the inner edges of the hole had closed there was an outer retinal defect but with time that outer defect also vanished and patient had full recovery of vision so a small macular hole was treated successfully without surgery the second case was a 65 year old female who complained of poor vision in her right eye since 2 months her best corrected visual acuity was 6 by 60 now on fundus examination we could see that there was definitely a macular hole so we did an oct and the oct showed there was persistent vitro macular attachment so vitro macular traction was present and the hole was more than 250 microns in size so this was a case of primary medium sized full thickness macular hole with vitro macular traction we know that such holes do not close on their own and just injecting gas or some special chemicals may not work in such holes in such cases and therefore the best way to treat them is to do a vitrectomy but just a vitrectomy is enough so that is what we did in this patient so we removed the central vitreous after that we stained the remaining vitreous with triamcinolone and with the cutter in the suction mode 
we gently induced a separation between posterior vitreous and the retina. This way, we could successfully remove all the vitreous inside the eyeball. We did not do any further steps. And with just this vitrectomy, in 15 days time, again, you can see that the inner edges of the hole has opposed. And in two months, the foveal morphology was restored. The hole was beautifully closed with good recovery of vision. The third and final case was a 73-year-old female who complained of poor vision in her left eye since 9 months. Her best corrected visual acuity was finger counting at half meters. On examination, you can see there is a large macular hole, large full thickness macular hole with you can see there is some elevation around the hole. This is the subretinal fluid cuff on the edges of the macular hole. So again we did an OCT and the OCT showed that the hole's aperture size was 873 microns. So it was more than 400 microns and there was obviously no vitrophobial uh, attachment. Usually by these advanced stages, vitreous is completely separated from the macular hole. And therefore, this was a case of primary large size full thickness macular hole without vitromacular traction. So, in this case, we had to first do vitrectomy. Once the vitreous had been removed, we also had to do ILM peeling. So, we stained the internal limiting membrane with a special dye called Brilliant Blue dye. As you can see, that's the reason why the retina is looking, or rather, the that layer is looking bluish. Then with a special internal limiting membrane or ILM uh, peeling uh, forceps or atraumatic asymmetric forceps, we created a flap of the ILM. So we are not lifting and peeling off the internal limiting membrane, but we are lifting the skin and sort of creating a flap with which we are covering the macular hole. So this is an important modification which has come to us over the last six seven years and with unlike previously with this case surgery now we do not remove the ILM we just create flaps of the ILM and leave them breached over the macular hole and you can see with this new wonderful technique even such large macular holes can be closed successfully obviously because you can make out that there was a delay in treatment in this case that even though the hole was closed, the vision has improved, but not as well as in the previous two cases. So, the take home message in this particular video was, or video R1, yes, macular holes are relatively rare. However, we all should be aware of them because if left untreated, they can lead to loss of vision. The good thing is, the treatment is relatively quick and easy. How we treat a patient with a macular hole, however, depends on three factors. Size of the hole, presence or absence of vitreous attachment to the hole, and cause of the hole. Hope you found this video useful. Thank you.